Welcome to the VGM Jams NYC podcast, episode three. Trace. Trace. <laughs> Some. Ah. That's wild. Yeah, it's uh, so third episode time. We uh, actually promptly are recording this almost exactly when we scheduled to, which is great. We yeah. didn't get pushed back. Well, I mean, the subways have been kind of a big old butthole as of recent like all of like oh the uptown gosh. trains i had this gig yesterday this brunch gig that's literally right off the f train i live right off the f train and i got off the train i got to the station yesterday at 11 or 10 30 in the morning because the gig was 11 30 right and i pull up to the station first thing i see f 32 minute wait. oh my god it, no. you know, and this was like a brunch gig that like I, it wasn't like one of these gigs that I like feel like okay I have to work you know it was one of these gigs that like a friend of mine called me for and I was like okay cool sounds fun let's just yeah. do it and you know so it didn't it wasn't like a lucrative gig it was like a whatever brunch gig and but it was like a hang and uh, I ended up having to Uber half the pay of the gig. Gee, oh, if, <laughs> if we're talking about just that. to get just to get there, and I was like, oh. Oh, so I I have a, a similar story than uh, yesterday. Uh, I played my first ever like late at night, ten until like oh, one yeah. one o'clock in the morning yeah, type you were gig. Yeah, talking about that. Yeah, and like. My mind you, I I could have just been slacking with my own transportation thing, but like I, I normally wait for the bus and it takes me to port and it's like sure, all pretty. Easy. Oh, your gig was in the city. Yeah, it was like oh, it was okay. like by Eighty Sixth Street. Oh, uptown. Yeah, okay, I see, so I see. East side or west side? West side. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, so is that this place Prohibition? If you yeah, yeah, I know, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I go to the bus stop and I'm like, you know, I'm just waiting or whatever, and I check the nj transit app and it's just like oh uh your bus isn't showing up and i'm like excuse me <laughs> they were just like nah not today yeah. and mind you like on the other side like for them going to like journal square and like the other direction of the bus i saw three of them going the other direction oh my gosh. and yet none of them were coming my direction and i'm like what is oh. going on <laughs> um so i literally had to uber it into the city only to get to port and then find out this whole like uptown d train line construction yeah going the on. orange line is totally messed up today yeah and i'm like yeah i, like, I don't know like i had to double take because like the d was picking up in port which i'm like that's never happened before it was running over the a yeah, yeah and and like i was just like how am i gonna get home well i was gonna i was asking that question because it's one o'clock in the morning i'm like how, sure. how am i gonna get home yeah uh, um but it just completely threw me off and honestly after we're done here i don't even know I don't even know what line I'm taking because yeah. up, the uptown way back is is completely blocked off, and I'm like, ooh. The, for the D train. For the D train, yeah, like the other platform take, is just. You can probably take the F to Bryant Park, and then from there, and take then like from the, there, take the either the shuttle or the seven. Yeah. Or um. Is the F still? Or running you could uptown? also just walk ten minutes. Yeah, it is. It's just it, they're just delayed. You might have to wait twenty minutes at the station, but gotcha. it is running, in fact. Yeah. So so I mean at that point if it's taking me to Bryant, then I could just walk from there. That's usually what I do after the yeah. sessions. This is a purely New York conversation. New York <laughs> like, the NYC. We're really we're really addressing the NYC part of VGM. Yeah, yeah at NYC this point. First. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh man, which also with that gig, uh to come because this this is gonna be a lot more of a chill yeah. Less structured vibe for for the people today. Yes. Um. I find I now understand, at least somewhat. I understand the dislike of pop gigs or like rock gigs. <laughs> and if somehow the person that booked me for this gig is listening, it's not y'all. The band. <laughs> the band was great. Um. You know the vibes were great. The the crowd was great. Like all that was great. Um. Mainly being a part, I guess, a part of the jazz scene in a way. Like playing a repetitive key, kind of just after, at, like it's fine for like the first hour. Then the second <laughs> hour hits. Then the third hour hits, and you're like, uh, there was there was a point where we were alternating alternating between like G and F and A and repeat over and over again. <laughs> and again, yeah, that no, sounds, that sounds like the vibe. Yeah, and again, no shade to the person that booked me. You're you're great, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, yeah. It was just something that like I noticed and caught on to. It was it was funny, 
because I think whenever we played either in, in G or in C, I was like, I have the urge to play Zelda's Lullaby because I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I just do it. Yeah. And, and you know, some people see, hear it and recognize it and like, yeah! There, there, there was a table in front that like recognized it. And I was going to keep going, but the horn player that got me on for the gig was like, stop noodling. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, that's lame that's see, uh, that's for me that's what kills the experience yeah. like like i mean i get it sometimes if it's like okay all right we have to get ready you gotta be professional but like but uh i'm really like when when people like take the fun out of the experience then that's when i feel like it's I'm, like okay i'm at work to, to i'm not give, on a gig <laughs> to give the benefit of the doubt i was doing it quite a bit because oh, i, 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 I really I was just, <laughs> I was just bored at a point honestly, and again it's no, and I have to keep repeating this in case they hear because it, it's like it's not them. They were all like really killing people. Yeah, I just got bored. That's about yep. it. <laughs> That's the life. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Yeah, it's like, and now now I get it, and I'm just like, uh, would I do it again? Not sure. You know, right? It's like, yeah, totally. I, I I enjoy playing and I enjoy getting the chance to do music, but it's kind of like a line of like. What are you feeling that you're willing to go right. uh, Upper West Side yeah. from Jersey for at ten o'clock at night? Totally. That yeah. There's a big. Uh, there's definitely a big plethora of questions that have to be asked at a certain point there. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. It's also one thing too because like, I I feel like there there are gigs. Or I don't know. I don't know. What, at what point do you call it a show, a gig? I, I still I, I don't even know. I've been in this professional field my whole life, and I still don't know. But I think, um, like, playing music in itself is something I always look forward to do. But there are times where it's not, where it's literally functional. It's like, this is, I'm performing a task. I'm a hired gun. This right. is, like, purely professional. And then there are other times where it's like this is not professional. Yeah, like this is very and last I'm having minute. a lot of fun, and this is just chill. But then it gets confusing when you get one or those one of those things in, in an environment that's the opposite. Yeah, it's like you're you're yeah. you, you're given room to experiment in a place that's very like professional in in environment and vibe, yeah. and then you may be asked to be playing very professionally and what's supposed to be a very relaxed event definitely both of those happens yeah both of those happen a lot there's a police car just the, angrily raging down the street oh, the in the background it's the city tradition you always gotta have <laughs> a, a police car just angrily <laughs> dashing out on the back i mean honestly with with how the gig was in format like mind you i found out about it last week sure was given yeah a, last minute vibes yeah and like I was given like a load of songs to at least be familiar with, with a majority of them being in a different key, which again, no problem. But I was like, I, this is not something I can really prepare for. I just got to yeah. go in. And uh, to those that are listening that may or may not have known this, I am told, I have to emphasize, I am told, I do not, I'm not fully 100% accepting of this. I am told I have perfect pitch. Which makes it a lot easier to work with these situations. <laughs> By definition, a, you have perfect pitch. I, I can confirm this as your saxophone teacher. <laughs> so I again, as I have been told, <laughs> um, which makes those gigs like a lot easier to kind of just like at least click right. quick, 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 quickly. Totally. Yeah. And it was funny because uh, there was a really nice violin player that was there. That was just like, how like have you guys been playing together a lot? I'm like, not really. You know, like we, yeah, we, totally. we played on a couple gigs, but like. And I told her, like, oh, once he's figured out the rhythm, I'm like, okay, I'll follow along with it. And then she was like, yeah, I get that. But there will be some times where you'll play something completely different. And it's just like, I don't even know how you got there. And I'm just like, man. <laughs> <laughs> just like, eh, fuck it, you know? <laughs> but then again, I don't know how you got there. It could be shade. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, literally what I'm wearing right now, which is, like, for those – I can't obviously see this. It's like a tie dye shirt made for made at my school. I wore this yesterday. It's a I nice do. shirt. Thank it's you. It's a great shirt. Yeah. It's, it's a nice mix of grays and blues, and I yeah. I really like it. Um, it's very nice. But I, I just wore this at the event because I'm like I like it's this is so last minute, so ra like randomly put together. Like not most of the bandmates that were there have not played together. I was just like I am chilling. 
Yeah. I, I cannot be asked to put too much in like into this, you totally. know? Totally. Yeah. And I think that that's also like a life hack in general. Like you like give put in as much as you want in order to not feel bad about what you receive, right? Like like if I if I'm doing a gig that's not for the money and it's for the hang, like I wanna be there and be a good hang. If right. I'm doing a gig for the money and not that, for the hang, then I'll put in as much effort as I need to feel like I'm earning what I'm getting paid, you know? Right, and it's like making that distinction is always important before yeah. before and after, well, before and during, honestly. Because, uh, yeah. like, truth be told, I honestly accepted this gig, and this isn't a good practice for anyone that's looking to start taking gigs or start playing more music, like, in front of people. I just took it to take it. <laughs> yeah. I, I really had nothing else lined up really and i was just like yeah i'm I'm free for a weekend why not totally you know it's it's not the best practice if you're really trying to go into because you want to make sure that you establish your value in some type of way right while also establishing like where what's your wheelhouse and what will get the best out of you that's what people usually want to look for so taking everything you know makes you seem like a jack of all trades but that's what they say about the jack of all trades they're master of none at that point yeah i but i like to operate under the philosophy that why be a jack of all trades when you could be a master of all trades? That too. <laughs> a mas- no, I mean no, that's another conversation. But <laughs> a master of all trades, yeah, I a just... jack of no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a jack of no sleep, master of all trades. No, but no, I feel that. I mean, I I went through a long period of time where I just said yes to everything, absolutely everything. Fifty go- fifty dollar gig, three hour cocktail hour, sure. Oh my god, you know, <laughs> yeah. And it's like an eight year old recorder student way out in Crown Heights. Oh my god. That gosh. couldn't even focus for five minutes. Sure. You know, like thirty minute lesson, two hour commute. Oh yeah, not it. <laughs> like I did, I did I did a lot of that stuff back in the day. And honestly I think like despite it not being like the most beneficial long term like approach it still is just nice to meet new people and totally. just like, get those experiences with yeah. new people. Like, uh, I actually what I think the ba- bassist and guitarist that was at the gig there, I told about the jam session. They were like, oh, what? Really? Like, that's so there sick. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> advertising. Get some advertising. <laughs> yeah. I talk about it all the time. Even, like, on in professional situations, you know, like... When I talk, when I'm at gatherings or events that are like all musicians, like gigging musicians or whatever, like, you know, of course people always want to talk about music and, which I hate. That drives me crazy. Oh, always. I, I I get so like. This is like my irrational pet peeve when mm. like musician, like other colleagues of mine, only talk like, about music that are like full time professional musicians. They do that for their whole life. Like, yeah, let's hang out. Let's get some dinner. Yeah, cool. I show up and it's just only music talk the whole uh, time. I'm like, dude, this is, I just don't, I don't want to talk about this. I want to like, I want to talk about video games. I want to talk about whatever the lamest movie is right now. Like, I want to talk about reality TV. Like, I, I just, man, I can't be in environments socially relaxed and myself well, where like not all of it is just music. It's and, kind of the equivalent of like, going out to dinner with a co-worker and you're talking about work yeah it's, exactly no it is literally that yeah it's it's the same and yeah. it's it's like no it that's I, that's a great analogy and i'm gonna start using that when i explain it to people yeah it's like you, <laughs> like if i was to go out to dinner with some of my co-workers and we just talked about the the students the entire time like i'm sure yeah, you wouldn't have a great time yeah you would not be having a great time exactly you know? like and mind you like i'll talk with coworkers like before the day starts yeah, totally. and like just kind of talk about like oh what dumb things have happened as of recent who got in trouble blah 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 but you yeah. know like outside of the work environment like no nah, we're not trying to talk about that we're just trying to get yeah. away from that you know and like with, yes with summer break coming up i'm like oh i really need to get away from all that <laughs> yeah totally yeah it's nice which also got to uh, emotionally prepare myself cuz at the time of recording this uh i'm actually performing uh like background music 
for the eighth graders' graduations, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm getting, I'm gonna get very emotional. That's like, so wholesome. I love that. <laughs> when is when do they graduate? So they graduate uh, to properly date us once again. We love dating ourselves. Right, <laughs> sure. Yeah, we do. Um, on June twentieth. So oh, the, a couple the, more days. Yeah. So in two days they're okay. graduating. Nice. And it started hitting as of recent. I'm like, oh. All this hurts. <laughs> There's especially uh, this one student that I had that was one of my first like saxophone students, uh-huh. who like I've seen grown not only as like as you know a sax player, but also as a person, and just kind of seeing that growth overall is just like it hit oh, home a man. lot. Yeah, I, I bet. And, and like a, I, I guess like a, a, a sappy little story. Uh, we recently went on the field trip to the high school of our town. Because we have like this big celebration where we're like we bring in all the bands of the different district of like the whole district, right? And just have them play what they've been playing all year. And as we were about to wrap up, like she just came up and hugged me, and she was like, "Thank you so much for teaching me." Aww. And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> "Emotions." <laughs> that's that's it's, that's why we do why we do though, you know. Pretty it's much, so yeah. Beautiful. Also, I love how I peaked the ever loving. <laughs> Of the mic. <laughs> no, actually, I think we're okay. It... Just like emotional damage. <laughs> um, were you quoting Stephen Heat? Eh? Yes. Oh, he's so funny. He's so funny. I showed, I showed, I showed Julia him for the first time like a week ago. <laughs> I will and... send you to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was like, she was like, she was like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant, you know. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I can't like I was like I can't believe it's taken me over a year of like be, like being with you to show you this person. Like Oh, uh, he's so he's great. Such a genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> How old are you? Nine? <laughs> Why are you Why are you at school? You're not walking. When I was nine I walked twenty miles. <laughs> so funny. Oh my god. Those are oh my god. Like his Obviously, his his like type of comedy. I'm like, can I repeat this? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, but I'm I'm still just like, man, it's still it's still funny. <laughs> oh, I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm. I guess I am Asian, so that is not a question that I ask myself about that humor. But yeah, yeah I don't. I, I'm. I appreciate when anybody appreciates that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's honestly like, it, it's been a thing, you know, <laughs> especially like. Uh, for anyone that has met me, they know that I am very much, you know, African American or Black, however you want to say it. Uh, and uh, a lot of things are like, you know, Black comedians is just like, oh, I can't repeat some of those jokes for obvious reasons, <laughs> right? And it's like you can still appreciate it, but it's yeah. it's it's kind of like those that want to re- like, you know, repeat rap lyrics. And it's just like, sure. there are some words, obviously, you can't, <laughs> you know, but you can still appreciate it, you know? What's up, guys? How's it going, everyone? So in order to listen to my our conversation on my uh, corporate contentless face, uh, you're going to need to subscribe to the Patreon for that, because we talk about that and a bunch of other interesting things, uh, such as non-Japanese people wearing kimonos. So in order to understand that context, please join our <laughs> Patreon. So I, I don't know. It's it is an interesting line to discuss and think about and navigate. And I don't think we can say there's an objective moral truth on what is and isn't acceptable. Well but, objective and moral are oxymorons. Right, each that's other, true. Right? Yeah, that's true. You can't have them together. Yeah, this is what happens when we're uh, completely off <laughs> This is the type of stuff we'll talk about. <laughs> kind of just haphazardly. <laughs> well, I, I mean, if anybody's listening to this, I would love, and you have your own perspective. I'd love to hear other perspectives too. Like, oh I yeah, think, I think the point of having these conversations is to be educated or to get educated, right? So if like, you know, I mean, we can only speak from our own experiences, our own experiences and our own, you know, cultures. So somebody who's from a totally different culture might have a totally different stance, yeah. you know. So I, I think it's interesting, you know. But I will say that most of the time, Japanese native people, if they see some, if they are living in America or if they live anywhere and they see somebody who's not Japanese wearing Japanese clothes, they're going to be excited. They're mm. not going to be upset. It's a lot of people in America yeah. that are not part of those cultures 
that are going to try and police other people so for that, wearing that's, that's a whole those kinds of things. Other conversation on <laughs> people being offended when they yeah. themselves are not the yeah. It, that's a whole other. That's thing. that's the Karen paradox. That is the Karen paradox, <laughs> and like it can apply to any side of the of the you know political spectrum. Like you can yeah. be the leftist left to ever left and you could still be a karen oh yeah no karen and politics are, are not are they're not in they're they're very different yeah they're, it's yeah. pure it's purely content of character just like yeah. can you <laughs> <laughs> so so types of karens <laughs> oh no that that is that is a that is a conversation for another what podcast. does a karen look like <laughs> oh god <laughs> no don't worry we're not going yeah there. we're not no. going there <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know there, I you know there are there are several Karens come in all shapes and sizes, just like the people they oppress. So yep, oh my god, or, and or judge. So, so I yeah. I will say this: whoever decided the male Karen equivalent be Richard, I need you to take a moment. Is that a thing? That is a thing. It's either I did not know that. It's either Richard or Kevin, and I'm like, I need you both. I need Kevin you is a great name. I it, 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 it I, I guess like Kevin. I guess because they go along the the K. I call people Kevin sometimes, even if they're not named Kevin, but not as an insult. <laughs> just as Kevin. Just as a placeholder. But I think more people use Richard now, and I'm like, I, I need a conversation with whoever decided that, and I need them. Yeah, where does that to, come from? Yeah. Well, I mean, we know what Richard is short for. Oh, no, of course. Yeah, but so like, there you go. <laughs> but Karen isn't, that's, Karen isn't that way. It's just Karen. It's just so a, I, that logic doesn't even work, because it's like, okay, well, maybe Richard stems... Well then, a different term, but then what? Okay, so what is Karen? Yeah, so well then that uh, asks the question of what is the origin of Karen being the name to distinguish this type of person? That's a question I'm really curious about that I'm sure several people have already researched that uh, I'm also sort of afraid of the answer. Off topic, a lot of etymolo like et etymological topics seem are a lot more interesting than they have any right to be. Like the etymology of memes is, is so unnecessarily interesting that I'm like how why and what <laughs> yeah right well, like did you know that like so you know poggers right for, of course for twitch yeah, yeah yeah did you know that that was originally based off of a game that was mainly played I think it was I could be wrong about this I think it was in the Caribbean or in that general area that involves popping off milk caps off of <laughs> like they literally took caps off of this drink that was like a like a berry mix, I think. Whoa! And like the drink was called Pog, so they literally <laughs> took the bottle caps and they were like different bottle caps, and they created the game of Pog, where you literally just flip bottle That's caps. That's wild. And like That's wild. Yeah, and like the reason why Poggers reached, you know, the the lingo of Twitch is because the now infamous uh, originator of the Pog face. Decided to play a game of Pog on oh, Twitch. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So like a game of Pog on Twitch, and he ended <laughs> up winning the game. Hence, Pog Champ. Wait. So oh, so the term existed on Twitch before it didn't originate from Twitch. No. It. it wow. Well, well, it the event that caused the thing to happen is from Twitch. From Twitch, right? But the game that started it was not from Twitch. I see. Wow. Yeah. And the reason like it got used a lot is because uh, when Overwatch was big, player of the game, Pog. Right, that's why that's what I thought it was. Yeah, yeah so the face <laughs> the name of the face came from something else. It didn't come from Oh wow. Purely Overwatch. Which that's crazy that, that is that's how amazing. that works. You that's know? wild. Etymology is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, I looked up I looked up something very interesting going back to I hate to keep going back to jazz, but No, it's it, it's we, fine. <laughs> John and Chris and I recorded our third Three Hunters album a few days ago and um one all of the tracks are in three. Uh, but, oh yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, but so one of the songs we recorded was uh Jitterbug Waltz by the great Fats Waller. And uh we were like, What does this mean? Like what is we were trying to figure out how to make all of the tracks nautical themed to right. some oh. degree. <laughs> we're like, what is a jitterbug? Like, what is this? What is it? Like, what's the origin? And and it's actually just there's no clear cut. Definitely. There is no clear cut. Like some people say, I think so. Some people say that it was literally a term used for bait that people used to fish for in the in the south. 
jitterbug. Like, yeah, people used to fish in the south, and they would call the bait worms that they would put on the hooks oh, jitterbugs. Oh, because they, yeah, they move around and yeah. jitter. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And and then somebody, I also saw an article indicating that it had something to do with like uh, when you were ill, or if you had some oh, sickness, the, like shivering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there, so there was, yeah, there was like this old, like this old, like disease i'm not even sure yeah it was something around. like that it was like yeah. the dancing fever or something like yeah that, something like that people literally danced until they died i'm like well because it was no it was it was it was a mutation of like rabies or something yeah, yeah so yeah. bizarre <laughs> but so and then weird and yeah. then i heard it also used as a term that black southerners used to call white people trying to do the jody grind Oh. That looked like like you know like white people looking really square or really like not doing the dance well. Yeah. So it was like an inside word that they used as a way to like make fun of like oh look those so so is doing the jitterbug over there. That's crazy. So I, so I've heard I've heard so that's those are three wildly different potential origins of the word. But you know, Fats Waller is long dead, so we, there's no so way to there's just no way figure can, it out. Yeah. So I was like, I was really interesting. So I was like, well, if we combine the definition of all three of them, what type we can of be you? like, it is. It, 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 it was a term used to describe unswinging white fishermen baiting, <laughs> baiting fish, fish in the deep south that caused a disease. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Which also fun fact, uh, <laughs> troll is not based off of the little imp that is under a bridge. It is based off of a fishing technique. Really? Wow. Yeah, dude. So much stuff comes from fishing. I don't know. I, I, fishing you, is like a meme. Is low key <laughs> fishing is the most goaded meme. Source. I mean, when you're in the middle of a river or like by the side of a river for so long waiting for a fish, you get bored. Yeah. So you think of things. <laughs> yeah. If you ever need like an incredibly creative thing or an idea, talk to a fisherman. I guess is the moral of the story. Yeah, because it's like you're in an environment where you're not left with nothing but the water, the fish, and your own thoughts. That's about it. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Have you ever gone fishing? I have not. I my grandpa in Japan used to take me when I was young to the to the shores, and uh, it was that was a test. I think that was a test of patience. For oh, sure. absolutely! I can imagine. Yeah, but also it's like you know, it's also like it's dude. Fishing is like the IRL shiny hunting. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> because when you finally get the fish, all the excitement. It's on, like yeah. oh my god! Like it, it. I don't know why. It could be. It could be this. But it could be like a three-inch long sardine, and, and it, you're just like oh my gosh! I am a god. Yeah, like, I just caught this <laughs> shit out of the ocean. Well, I'm not a fan of but, shiny hunting, so that would make sense. Yeah, I mean, I'm not hunting. a fan of hunting. Is a thing in general, you know. Yeah. Obviously, like if when every time we went fishing, we ate the entire fish. Or we threw it back if it was not like an edible fish. Like it's it's not like a it was. I'm really not into game hunting. I've never understood the idea oh, of just taking either. life for no reason. Um, glory is not an excuse for murder. Yeah, you know, I I just can't. Um, anyway, but I mean, you know, to each their own. I think it is a very important part of some people's culture. But I, yeah, you, I for me like. I am certainly no vegan. I eat meat. I eat chicken. I eat right. fish. I'll eat whatever as long as it's tasty, especially if it's a cultural experience. But, but uh, I, I'm very like not into the idea of just game hunting oh, no, in I, general. Yeah. Like, and the fact that you said that you either release the fish or you yeah. eat the fish. You, yeah. You hunt with purpose, not yeah. not doing it as a game, right. and that's perfectly fine. You yeah, know? totally. Because it's one thing to like spend the copious amount of weeks getting national decks ready compared to <laughs> compared to like hunting down a live animal for funsies you know one's pixels and one's this an is actual making me question the analogy <laughs> like wait a second i is, I, is resetting at sky pillar five thousand times <laughs> as morally messed up as, oh no absolutely not oh absolutely not <laughs> The point is that it's not morally messed up. Yeah, it's, right. It's like okay, good. I feel absolved. Yeah, you're fine. I feel absolved. I, I honestly, I'm for be, shiny hunting. I'm gonna be real. I was just <laughs> looking for a good transition. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you want to tell the peeps at home the the journey you have been on as of recent. Ah. Um, yeah. I mean the journey. Yeah. So the journey is about to come to a close, actually. But Max and I have been 
completing the national Pokedex. Um, Specifically the Gen 3 version of yes, the Pokedex. Yes, the Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire Emerald Pokedex. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we're not, I'm not doing the whole, like, 1,010 mons. Yeah, thing. I already did that. <laughs> yeah, but you, you'd done it over several years, right? Like, I, I, get, I guess by this point it would count as several years, yeah. Like, it started pandemic yeah i i I tried i mean i'm not trying to downplay oh no 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 no. you're 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 listen i don't recommend it to a lot of people (laughs) um there was legit a point where like there are specific legendaries or specific mythicals where it's like i have no idea how i'm going to be able to attain any of this yeah uh should i even go for it and i literally only was able to pick it back up because of luck sure that was it (laughs) how did you wait so how okay well i'll I guess I should finish, but yeah, so yeah. like so Max, so Max Boyko and I set out to complete the National Gen Three Pokedex in about early April. Oh, wow, that recently? Yeah, maybe like March. March was when we were like, oh, we should do it, and April's when we started the journey. Wow. Yeah, and then um, yeah, it's here we are now, like past the midpoint of June, and and we're almost there. Um, I've had a lot of like long commutes and like back and forth hours of just sitting around to do it. But um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I will say this now, like retrospectively, having almost completed it, I have I have so well, all I have left is Ho and Lugia from the event, mm. Celebi, which I'm gonna have to do for Japanese Sapphire Coliseum yep. business, and then and then I have. Four friendship evolutions, which are Togepi, oh. into Togetic, Blissey, or Chansey to Blissey, oh. and then the two uh, Eevees, Umbreon and Espeon. So, the, okay. So, those uh, are the last four that I have other than the Johto legendaries. Can I go on a quick rant, real quick? Yeah. So, yeah, of course. I found, so to, ha- to try to assist in your journey, yeah. I crafted a guide. That went oh over no! All, I know all, all I the know. specific yeah, yeah, locations. Yeah, yeah. I I used it a lot actually I towards pre- the end. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, there was something stupid that I found out about while is this the Eevee thing. It is the Eevee thing. Oh, I know, I know. So the I've already bred them several times though, so it's cool. Yeah. So We're good. <laughs> so so here is and it technically was present in Gen Four as well. It's dumb there too. Wait, how but, is it in? How is it present in Gen Four? I'll explain in one okay, second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, in the only game, and it, it's less stupid in Gen Four because of the fact I'm about to say the only game that Eevee is obtainable in, not counting the game, the GameCube games in Generation Three, is in Fire Red and Leaf Green. There is no day and night cycle in J in Gen Three or for Red Fire Red and Leaf Green specifically. So there is no feasible way that you can get Espeon and Umbreon in Fire Red and Leaf Green, if you were to get them, without playing the GameCube games, by the way, you would need to try to breed them by, what is it, four, four Island? Yeah. And then try to trade it over to the Gen 3 games, and that would be the only spot that you can evolve and it. And then you have to trade it back. And then you have to trade it. it back once you've evolved it. This huh. is this is the only case of that really happening yeah. in any of the Pokemon games. And the reason I say that, because it is technically present in Gen 4. Right. Where you, you cannot... Can go to Kanto. You can go, you can go to Kanto. Well, in that case, the first five evolutions before Gen 4, you can get in both HeartGold, SoulSilver, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. But you could not get Leafeon and Glaceon in HeartGold, SoulSilver. Wait, why not? They're, they're rocks that they need to evolve by because they were... The oh, in Heart Gold Soul Silver. In Heart Gold Soul but Silver. But you can get them in Diamond and Pearl. Exactly. And you, I see. And you can get Eevee in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. So it's less of an extreme case. But then afterwards they started putting them in Gen 6. Because yeah. I remember in, in Ruby, in Omega Alpha, I could get Glaceon and Leafeon. Yeah. Because so, there was like places in the Petalburg Forest or there was like something they added that lets you do that later. Yeah, it was it was a thing that they had to retroactively change oh, for the later remakes. I see. So like Gen 3 is that one oddity where the stupid thing <laughs> right yeah 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 it, it just doesn't it doesn't make any sense and That's like brutal. the fact that you either need to get to that point and trade it to a gen 3 game or just bite the bullet and play 
right. uh, Coliseum and XD, which nothing wrong with that because those are wonderful right, games. Of course, yeah. But it's still just kind of ridiculous in retrospect. That's so wild! Wow. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it. Fire Red, Leaf Green are not as pretty. The yeah, they're just like poor. <laughs> they're just like poorly designed. I think the yeah. post game is really fun. I will say that. Yeah. I will say I did the trainer tower and I got to the top just with my Milotic. Oh, that's sick. Literally, I it, the other secondary Pokemon were completely fodder. Like I had <laughs> I had like a level 70 Venusaur and like a level 80 Dugong. But like they would just die in one hit from everything. So my Milotic just carried my team all the way to the top, which for me ended up being the best and quickest. I didn't have a thief Pokemon, so it was the best way to get King's Rock. Ah, so I, right. I had to go to the King's Rock, top of the tower, but then you need two because Politoed and, and Slow King. And Slow King. So I, I ended up cloning it in Emeralds because <laughs> I was like, screw this, it's still the game. Yeah. The cloning is part of the game. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be that purist about it. So I cloned my King's Rock and then and then that's how I got two. I just say well no, actually I did metal coats the legit way though, because I got one I got both one from Fire Red and one from Leaf Green. Right. And you can also get them pretty cheap at the battle tower, I think. Yeah, I Emerald. think so. But but I got yeah, I did the I did the metal coats from they're just on the ground on five islands in in Fire Red Leaf Green. But that was that was a saga for sure. Yeah. The Metal <laughs> Code King's Rock saga. I don't know if this is a hot take or a cold take. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's a room temperature take. Uh, the Kanto isms of fire red and leaf green uh, are the worst part. Any any it, uh, anything yeah. that is I carried think that's over, true. Yeah, anything carried over from the first game, as in the poor the poor gym location design, as in how everything is arranged for the gyms. Yeah. Uh, the poor HM placement, uh, the the hindered decks. The, it it it's the solid. fact that you have to catch sixty before you can even do the national decks is really lame. Too. Yeah, it's like it's like really like extra. It's like, dude, you can't. It's like really like. I get that the post game is the best part of the games, but also like I don't I don't want to do all that effort just to yeah. get to the good part. It's like too much. Also, I'll say this, and I'm I believe this in every game. And this is for me the thing that really detracts from Kingdom Hearts 2 as a game. Sorry, oh, Lemon. Wow. <laughs> is that I cannot stand games that make you backtrack. Mm. I don't like that. I like to be go to an area, be do everything in the city, and be done with it and go to the next place. I don't mind like I like the Easter eggs. Like I think it's cool to like, oh, like if there's something that needs waterfall near the first city and then you later once you get it, you can go back. That's fine. Yeah. I'm talking about when you have to like Go all the way up to Cerulean, and then you go make your way all the way down to Fuchsia, do the Safari Zone, get the bike voucher, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to go all the way back up to Cerulean just to get the bike. And then you can go all the way back, whatever it is, west to get Fly. Yeah, it's, Like, that's it's, so obnoxious. Like, the, just like, uh, why do I have to go back to go forward and it doesn't actually serve like an efficient it doesn't serve a purpose for me so that's the main difference it because like admittedly as someone who is uh one of the biggest gen 4 fans that i know yeah. uh backtracking with recontextualization i think works a lot yeah, better totally because yeah. like i guess spoilers for anyone that hasn't played through diamond pearl platinum dude this I, story, yeah just, it's all, literally all you're, 10 20, of you. you're almost 20 years like yeah <laughs> like all, all 10 of you that care about those spoilers um aka half of our listeners aka (laughs) (laughs) um there's a point later on i think specifically after the sixth gym yeah where you start backtracking to all the different lakes because things are starting to go down with team galactic so you're like you gotta go i remember this. you gotta go back to lake verity to not lake verity back to lake uh oh my god is it no, it's not well, very. It's kind of like in, I mean, even in Gen oh. three, you have to go back to Slateport when they take the submarine. And right. Stuff. So, all right, back to Lake Valor, back yeah. like to be back to Lake Verity, because uh, that's where the plot is starting to happen. They're going after the Guardians, and like you said, in Gen three, you got to go to Slateport because they have they finally rebuilt the submarine, and that leads into the whole thing with Lily Cove and right. like the Empire. Yeah, but yeah. I f- I feel like with that backtracking. That is, I feel like... It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Because it, because you get to Slateport the first time early in the game, and you're like, whoa, there's a submarine, there's a museum, what is all this? Wow. And then you leave, and then suddenly later in the game, you're like, oh, this place has purpose now. 
Right. So that's okay because it's adding now purpose to a thing that was just pretty before, you know. But going back to a certain location for an op technically yeah. optional like object. Well, I told you I beat the Elite Four without flying a bike, right? Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> like honestly it yeah. Pur purposeless backtracking is not fun. Yeah. Especially when it's like, oh, you technically don't need to do it, but you should do it if you want a easier or better experience. And it's right. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they they could have been designed a little better, I think. Yeah. But also, when you think about it, they were remakes of Gen 1, which was already yeah, sort that, of a haphazard game. And That's like, why I said the Cantoisms, because it's like yeah. everything that comes, like, to give everyone a... I guess a hot take. Gen one's my least favorite. I, I, everything within it, like the Pokemon, are great, but they're very like hit or miss for a good amount of them. The region is just the structure of it just doesn't feel right. The story pretty much could have just been taken out, and it's just it doesn't it doesn't really yeah. impact anything, and it doesn't play at all it doesn't play it doesn't have much replayability either nope like and i'm talking yeah. purely gen one like yeah and red, this, blue, green, this obviously yellow. doesn't include people that have like tremendous nostalgic value for it that, oh like, yeah they're like maybe like you know maybe they grew up in the early 90s and they played it as a kid that's cool i think that's i there's definitely val value to that like there's certain oh, there movies is. like i'll watch the bionicle movie any day of the week <laughs> even though it's a literally garbage because i just grew up on that movie yeah. but but yeah no i feel you i think objectively speaking gen one is is bottom tier yeah. i would well i wouldn't say quite bottom tier but it's it's, it's almost it's it's down there it's for down sure. there and it's like yeah i i know the recent generations like de i mean I definitely gen nine i haven't <laughs> played nine so i don't know so gen nine is notorious <clears throat> excuse me for being like very laggy oh i know that it's glitchy and yeah kind of and it's like but, but I I feel I don't like actually care that doesn't actually bother me really. It it can bother me in spots, not fully. But I know people like Lamel, for example. Yeah, he can't play through the game because he just it bothers him so much, and sure. I understand. Sure, that. sure, sure. No, I can yeah. I can understand that too. Yeah, and like I excuse it more with with Gen Nine than Gen One because the story is so the substance is there worth yeah, yeah like there's so much substance yeah. in this game if the same it, as mu musically speaking too yeah it's you know like, what i mean it's like if you don't you might not be the best technician on an instrument you might not be able to like shred face on whatever instrument you play but like but like if it's melodic and if it's compelling it's gonna make for a a better musical experience than just some a robot that's playing changes you right know, you know like yeah. it, it it doesn't need to yeah. be the most functioning thing if what is there is right. worth it and that's yeah, why like i agree with that i'm totally with you there and sure. that's why gen 8 for those that like it i'm sorry for what i'm about to say gen 8 is one of my least favorite i would that's what i the, i was about to agree the Gen 1 is bottom tier, then I thought about Gen 8, and yeah. I was like, wait a second, that's yeah. bottom tier. Gen 8 is really, really it, the bottom of the barrel for it's me. It's devoid it's so bad. of content. and like it's so bad. And I'm going to be real, I'm mainly talking about the main story. The DLC, yeah. the DLC there's content. Yeah, but, but I, don't, I don't buy DLC. I, you know, call me a boomer, but like... Dude, the DLC, all that needs to do, if it exists... First of all, if I ever design a game, there will never be DLC. Fair. There will... Maybe there'll be... Okay, I don't want to say never, because, like, I think DLC is cool in terms of offering aesthetic modifications. Yeah, Or if like, it's, like, an extra campaign after the fact that's, like, oh, cool, okay, here's some more content. But if anything, that should just be, like, that should just be a separate release, you know? And maybe if you have the other game make it somehow tie together in some cool way but the game should speak for itself like like an one huge like did you ever play final fantasy 7 uh, in the final fantasy saga oh uh, I, so i haven't fully played it but i know that's like different discs for each part yeah of the which is fine but i still think of that as one game but for me it's like there's spin-offs of final fantasy 7 right like dirge of cerberus where he plays vincent and um Advent Children, the movie, mm. even the remake, kind of without spoiling too much, is sort of 
an extension of the OG Final Fantasy or can be seen of, seen as that. I in those cases, mm. I'm like, yeah, maybe they weren't all great games, maybe they weren't all great spin-offs, but it still preserves the integrity of OG Final Fantasy VII. Right. You know, like, like, I don't know. This is this is something I constantly tackle with in Gen Five too. Like Black and White versus Black Two, White Two. Right. Like Black Two and White Two are unbelievable games. Oh, they really are. Objectively speaking, maybe maybe the be- like possibly the best in the franchise. Right. Maybe not my favorite, but. Just objectively speaking, Con- as games, as flow, as like challenge level, as option, like creativity to challenge level, I think they're really well designed. Oh yeah, no, like especially when you consider like the the philosophy of design yeah. for the games itself. Like it's been on record that the director for that game was just like, we wanted to try to put in as much content as we could and we actually got asked like do you want to put in this much it's like yeah we should yeah like that design philosophy was pretty much like this the main thing with gen 5 which is why a lot of i understand why a lot of people love it i can personally see it as the objective peak of the franchise yeah, i think it's pretty good you know yeah. like i i still love gen 4 with all my heart but right i, I know yeah. that I know that Gen Five is truly something wonderful. Yeah, say, like like for me, like Gen Three is always going to be like the most special because of my experience with it. Right. I mean, also Gen Three and Four also are great. Like, a big, yeah, like they're pretty great. But like you know, like but Gen Five, I think, kind of polished what Gen Three and Four started, and then like really took it to the next level with the remakes, Black Two and White Two. I guess they're not remakes. The, the continuous sequels, sequels. sequels. Yeah. The sequels for me were perfect. I was like, that didn't need to be DLC. That they was... just released another game where you could do another playthrough, same region, same general vibe, but just with add-ons and extra stuff. That's I want that to be a thing in gaming now. And I know it's more expensive, so it probably won't be. And it's like DLC is such a thing now that we're just sort of in that world. And yeah, maybe I do sound like a boomer with that. But like I, I just kind of I love the idea of like releasing something that's beautiful as it is like i mean even with breath of the wild like i'm glad that they released you Tear, know, oh, tears. Yeah, tears of the kingdom i haven't played tears at all yet and i'm still waiting to get a switch again but like but like breath was amazing even the dlc was fine because it didn't it didn't salvage anything from the game like it just added extra content right more more stuff was added yeah, like but post-game content is cool but i think it it really does come down to like when it comes to dlc just is it worth not including it in the original game? Because, like, our favorite games are Emerald and Platinum, respectively. Sure, yeah, yeah, right? more or less. And more or less. And, like, those were pretty much just... It, it could have, like, the additional content that was added, one, should have been there in the beginning. Yeah. But two, like, could have been seen as, like, DLC-able content. But they were still made into their own games. And then it's kind of like questioning the validity of like do they deserve to be at that their own game price tag mm. with emerald and platinum yes ultra sun ultra moon maybe not <laughs> yeah i actually never finished ultra sun ultra moon i i played sun, i beat sun and moon and then uh i forgot what i think i had i think i beat sun and i bought ultra moon Mm. But I never finished Ultra Moon. I like I barely got so far. I, I got very minimally deep so into it. Despite my comments about Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, as much as like the story was butchered in that game for me, like I love Sun and Moon's story. It's so mind you, like it's mainly because his family impacted, and it felt like a lot closer and it felt more intimate in scale mm. compared to the other games, where it's like very bombastic and grandiose. And I like that. It was very, like, close to home. Like, this is a story of a messed up family, and we're trying to just go through it. Right. You know, but... And Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon kind of changed it up in a way I didn't like. But I still had a lot of fun, mostly because of the team that I had. Like, I found out that Island Scan was a thing, and that all of the mm-hmm. Island Scan Pokemon for the games were some of my favorites ever. Oh, that's cool. I see. Like, I never I never got that deep into those games to even do that. Yeah, no, like, uh, the new Lycanroc form came out. When, right, okay. The, so I got that. Which is why I grew to love it a lot. I that's found in it, the Ultras? Yeah, that's in the oh, Ultras. I see, I see. Uh, I should play those, maybe. Like Blastoise and, Infer- and Infernape you can find through Island Scan, and I was just like, those are like my two favorites. What were those starters in Gen 7? Uh, Desi- they, was that Decidueye, Rowlet, Rowlet and uh, Litten? 
It was Litton, Rowlett, Pop Leo. Is Litton Gen 8? Oh, Litton, Rowlett. Oh, those are such good starters. They are. I love those starters, actually. I would put those up there in my top three favorite Gen starters. I, I also love... I also really... Yeah, I should play those games again. I think I didn't give Gen 7 a fair enough chance, maybe. A, I, a, a lot of people say that, like, oh, it's, just, it's the real start of Pokemon being made easy. And it's like, listen, the tutorial is long, but once you yes. get past it, it's like you get actual content. Yeah, my, <laughs> my, my thing was I, th- I felt like the cutscenes were, like, a little too much when I played Sun and Moon. I was like, I don't need this many cutscenes. And that's fair. And I know. also, but I also don't want to skip them because I do care about the story. But I want the story to feel a little more interactive with the gameplay. It, it. I think if more, but yeah, I think if more of the Pokemon games took the link to the past approach with interactable storytelling, I think it, it would work a lot better. Like cutscenes, yeah. I understand their importance. You know, they give. Yeah, but they don't need to be like. T- 10 minutes long and happen every five seconds like that's true that's that's sort of my thing it's like i i'm look i'm a i love the metal gear solid thing like i know metal gear is like infamous for having an hour long plus cutscene like there's a whole movie that's a cutscene you know but like i think that's fine because it's like you play the game and that's like you that's like the reward yeah it's a cutscene but when it like even i feel that like in kingdom hearts to, this is my man. I'm like, you're, I'm you're, like, full, you're full. Kingdom I'm like Hearts giving Kingdom Hearts. Like, this is why like, Kingdom Hearts 2, when you have to go back to every world again, I don't feel like that actually fleshes out the game well enough. Like, I was like, why do you have to go everywhere twice? Like, that's so. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. But uh, that's why I did like Final Mix because there was a little more diversity in the replayability of it. Well, way. yeah, because it does. But, isn't Final Mix like they start diving into a little bit more of the different characters? Like, uh, yeah. There's also a lot of there's also a lot of extra content that you can do like there's like the data battles and there's like all these like secret areas and hollow bastion that you can like explore. It's pretty cool. Right. Um anyway, but it they, it's like closer to open world. But when I'm what I'm saying about Kingdom Hearts is I feel like the for me the momentum of the gameplay really suffers when you're in the Disney worlds because like Every time you discover a new area, there's like a random new cutscene that doesn't actually contribute that much to the story. Right, it's kind of just something that happens. To yeah, happen. I would rather it be like, okay, there's two or three cutscenes at major story points that are like 20 minutes long. Like, I'm more into that than like have like a six minute cutscene every one hour of gameplay. Like, I don't know if I like that actually. Right. But I don't know. I digress. That's sort of my that's that was my biggest issue with Gen Seven was that I felt like I would be in the groove and then there would just be a really long cutscene and then I'd just be like, okay, I'm not in the groove anymore. You know, like I didn't feel like I could go 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 in Gen Seven the way that I'm used to in Pokemon. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, <laughs> that said, I th- I think it's beautiful. I love how they sort of broke away from the traditional like gym leaders thing. Yeah, I really loved what they did with the with the professor champion thing oh like, Kukui I think is, is an amazing he's so character. dope I he's think so that's so cool. cool I really like all of that I think that's all awesome I love how they're kind of like when you're in when you're in what is Jens it's uh, Alola. Alola like when you're in the Alola region it's like you feel like they're building their own infrastructure as you're playing oh, the game oh yeah cause like, cause like it's, it's such a cultural it's cool like yeah like it's so based in its own history yeah that like understand like taking in the the concepts from like the other regions is like new to them because they're like yeah. they want to honor their traditions like that's i feel so much respect for that because it's yeah. like they're so ingrained into their own culture that they're like no i don't think we need it but then there here's this one guy that's yeah. just like i think we should do this <laughs> yeah yeah totally yeah i think that's great and at no point is he is he viewed as like a like uh and Wow, the only word I can think for it is appropriator. I am just in a weird yeah. place today. <laughs> <laughs> Referencing like, the previous comment. Yeah, yeah, like, he's not trying to, like, get rid of the old culture. He's just like, no, let's add on some grandeur to it. Yeah. That can also get us some recognition with the, you know, and, like, however you take that, take it as you will. Yeah, totally. But, like, Kakui's mission at the end of the day, honestly, was, it made sense. Like, yeah. he, he explored... Other regions got a chance to experience their own leagues and everything. He's just like, you know what? I should bring this back home and we should do this. 
Yeah, totally. So it's like it's really cool that you get to throughout the story, you get to see little bits and pieces of it of him like gathering the people, him going to Mount Lanakila and trying to build the whole thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he's doing a lot of yeah. He, yes. he did a lot there. <laughs> he really oh man. <laughs> no, I I agree. I think that's cool. I um yeah, I I should I'm going to I'm going to give Ultra Moon an actual fair playthrough. Yeah. Honestly, I recommend it, especially like I say with Ultra Moon uh, I feel like the decks in that game is is really slept on because like, yeah. and I don't mean like all the new Pokemon. I mean like the regional accessible decks. I, I watched a video actually. I watched a video on YouTube about like it was like the best games pre first gym, like the games that have the best selection of Pokemon pre first gym. And I they said Ultra. They said Ultra. I Their could, vote was for Ultra Sun and Moon, where their favorite games, like in terms of selection and just amount of options and f to build your team. Pretty. Yeah, I mean, and I was like, that's awesome. That's I, something I really slept on. I mean, like with uh, again, I'm gonna keep singing the praises of Island Scan. Like as much as I love Sun and Moon story wise, the the Island Scan had a bit of the I hate to say it, the weaker selection of starters. Like they had Gen two, five, and six. No shade to them. Well. Shade to Gen 5. Yeah, but those, those starters, <laughs> incredible game, terrible starters. Yep. <laughs> but Gen 2 and 6, no shade to them. Yeah, you know, I, I, they, had, fine. they had starters that I liked, they had starters I didn't like, you know. But Je Ultra Sun and Moon had Gen 1, Gen 3, Gen 4. Literally the four, the three generations with the best lineup of starters, in my opinion. Like, all of them hit. <laughs> those are good starters, all of them, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, you give me that. And then you add on even more Pokemon that I can get. And I'm like, oh, I'm good. I can make whatever, like, I think I have a Decidueye, an Infernape, an Electivire, a Blastoise, Lycanroc, Duskworm, Garchomp. And I'm like, that is the most me team I have <laughs> ever rocked. Like, if I want to make it even more me, I would have swapped the Garchomp for the Lucario. But I was like, no, I haven't used Garchomp in a playthrough for like like this. So let me let me use Garchomp. And it, it works yeah. so well. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, man. Anyways. So I guess... What do we have on the calendar? We have the next session is July 7th. Yes. So that... Our next session is going to be July 7th. Gonna that's going to be fun. That's going to be interesting. Yes. Because uh, I'll be essentially working alone on staff. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, because it'll, it'll just be me. We're, we're featuring John Bowler, who is... Uh, House regular, uh, well, well, Dom is just playing a few songs. It's only three songs, so Dom can help with staff after the set. Probably, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> also, also, maybe I can get Matt or someone to volunteer help out. That might be good. Honestly, he, I just needed yeah. someone to handle the the social stuff. That's about it. I can still handle the door. Okay, we'll figure it. Or, or we could, yeah, or we could. Like if you since you have the logins already, you could do the socials, and someone else could do door. Yeah, so we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, so I got a gig. I'm playing at Bryant Park Outdoor Concert Series that day. Mm. Um, with Afrolet and Jazz, it's gonna be cool. And I was like, oh, but it falls on the same day as OS. Like I don't know. I committed to OS first. Like maybe. And then I saw the price tag. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I should probably take this gig but alas we have to work when we have to work as freelancers but yeah. i'll still be there i'll be there at the end i'll be there i'll probably get there we finished playing it by 8 8 ish 8 15 probably realistically so i'll be there by 9 at the latest probably even earlier because it's only a few stops away on the train mm. so um so i'll be there towards the end of the session but yes john bowler is who hopefully you're listening to this john bowler because you're, you're, you're one, one of, of our patrons. patrons. Yeah. Um, John Bowler will be putting together the group and rep for the beginning. We're going to try a little bit of a different format this time to hopefully accommodate for more jam time, um, but still keep the momentum and energy that the house band puts forward. But uh, yeah, it should be cool. I'm kind of excited to see how it goes. If I do. Part of me still like the, like the, the old school part of me likes the idea of just having house band in session. I honestly, yeah, like but this, this we'll whole see. the whole changeup has been a bit like interesting to get used to in a way because it's like yeah. you don't you know like change is necessary and with how 
we've been it's, growing yeah. and everything. You know, like we we want to try to accommodate everyone that we can in yeah. the best way we can, and like time is is always something that's going to be an issue. So it's it'll yeah. be interesting to at least see. You know? Totally, yeah, and I also know there's going to be some really cool people coming, um, like people that have pull in the music world and oh, okay. like are interested in how we run our events that might do some write-ups on our thing also the magazines the publications so then i like gotta that. show up as staff dang it yeah you gotta put your staff hat I gotta, all the way up. i gotta go all out on this dang uh, no no you can just do what you usually do you don't have to do anything different um no, but let's flip forward but, it's, uh, but yeah there's gonna be some cool people coming like reviewers writers and and also just like some musicians that aren't necessarily as familiar with the, with the vibe so um yeah stay tuned i also want to do we're gonna we're working on figuring out the logistics of doing like a fundraiser type thing yeah we're also uh if anyone has any uh any venues that they know that would be yeah it'll be down this. to this kind of thing that'd be super cool yeah and i kind of want to as we're getting into like more and more of the content that we're doing i did want to talk about one last thing and just kind of where we're at right now because we are trying to do all these amazing things we're all trying to also hopefully get some more non-podcast non-jam session content for you guys yeah um yeah definitely we also want more people on board for content in general so oh yeah if you are somebody that would like to volunteer to help with our social media pages and uh you know there there could be fees like that we could pay potentially depending on what our income is um from the next few sessions and patreon moving forward etc any of the patreons listening thank you guys so much for your support you're really helping this be possible and um but yeah if anybody has a burning desire to help us manage the social media then please let us know and we can work something out yeah um but uh yeah sorry you were saying oh no that so with, you know, all of us trying to bring out more content and trying to uh, get more people on board, uh, I do want to apologize real quick because I know things have kind of been slowing down on the content front, like clips and everything. But it's, all, it's also because we're kind of at a point of just general, I guess, burnout in a way. Not so much yeah. like we're like, we're not at a point where like, oh, we don't want to do any of this. Like we still want to do so much, but totally. It's just yeah. I mean, it, like I said, we just we we would appreciate some help because yeah. it's a lot. I mean, it is a lot, which is great, and it's a good problem to have. But uh, but yeah, you know, we're only two people, Brilliant. and we both have robust lives yeah. <laughs> that we also you know need to attend to in other ways. So it's it's difficult to keep things going, and also. We want to make sure that you guys, as the community or whoever, you know, whoever's listening to this and who we're a part of, like, we want to make sure that, like, this community is nurtured and given the attention fully that it deserves. And, like, you know, it's it's a really beautiful thing. And we're really grateful that we can even, like, we have a podcast. Like, yeah, we're talking is, about a podcast right now. It's so dope. Where we could talk about uh, the line of cultural appropriation while also talking about our opinions on Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went from Pokemon to appropriation to <laughs> so, <laughs> several to, to different types of Karens. And, my God. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, so, like, it's pretty awesome that we have a podcast and we have all this stuff and that, you know, whoever is still listening to this, we are so grateful for you, and we really appreciate you. Um, so we want to make sure that this community is given everything that it needs, and it's hard for just the two of us to do that among our lives. And the people that are on the staff, like Sage, Cyan, Dom, we, you guys are awesome too. But you also guys have your own lives. <laughs> yeah, like we're not we're not trying to. Put so, too much on anyone that yeah and we're you know all of us are putting a lot of hours into this uncompensated hours into this to like make sure things are at the level they're at and the community hasn't stopped growing like we get new people joining the discord almost every day last session there was several people that had come for the first time and we're like i'm gonna come back next time yep <laughs> so like we're growing which is amazing and beautiful but as a result we need to maybe ask for some more help and you know allow us to live and breathe more sane lives because obviously the two of us are 
busy with several things. So. Yeah, I still got to work on the book update. <laughs> yeah, the book update. You know what I mean? Like the book update. I, I, the, I it, whatever few seconds of free time I've had this week have been mediating between the members of the band for the next session and making sure they have everything they need. Um, and yeah, even like you know, like I'm gonna be coming off of a really intense gig on the 7th and then I'm going to be going straight to the session, you know, to make sure things close out smoothly too. So it's like a lot, you know, it would be part of me is like, yeah, of course I love this. Like I want to be doing this. I'm glad that I can even make any of it. But then another part of me is like, I just want to go home and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> so yeah, burnout is, is real for sure. Yeah. Honest, We're feeling it. Yeah. Honestly, but, it's like a, it, it, it's just a sense of like, it's weird. It's like, both being overwhelmed, but also feeling like you're not doing enough. It's it's yeah, weird. That's yes, exactly what it is. It's the combination of those two things. Yeah, and it's like it's not even like with just the sessions, just in general of just like yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, I don't know, I don't know. What yeah, I'm, totally. I don't know what I'm feeling right now. Yeah, I mean, dude, I would love to like teach one or two students a week, play one gig a week, and just spend the rest of the time. Sleeping. <laughs> Sleeping and working on VGM stuff. Like, that'd be dope. Right. Like, to wake up, this is your job. Like, you know. That'd be sick. But uh, we're not there yet, right? We can't, we're not, like, able to make a wage off of all the stuff that this community, which, honestly, I don't think it's impossible to say that, it, I don't think it's impossible for that to be a future thing, you know? Yeah. Like, especially if we get nonprofit status and if we start getting grants and stuff like that. Like, man, there's so many things we can do that will drastically improve the quality of the community and the experience for the staff and, and you know, community members tenfold. Um, but, you know, we just have to, we have to stick it out so that we can get there and we have to make sure that the momentum Isn't, doesn't drop off. You yeah. Know? Like, we don't want to have to, like, rebuild. That, I guess that's what we're trying to avoid, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to volunteer, if you want to help out, I know some people have already come up to us being like, if you need help with anything, let me know. And, uh, yeah, now is your time to reapproach because a lot of people have thankfully said that to us. But if you are interested in helping out and being part of the team, volunteering, and, uh, yeah, just please let us know because we want to make sure we can produce top-level stuff Pay um, might be criminal, criminal at first. <laughs> yeah, the pay, you know, the pay. Well, that's why I was saying volunteer because, we, yeah. you know, we're cr pay. We, we don't we are already inflicting criminal pay on ourselves. Yeah. So we don't want to inflict criminal pay on anybody else. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you're if you're down to, to come through and help with things, then uh, please let us know. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, I we'll think, see you. Uh, I think we're good. I, we only got one question. And oh, we got it. Let's see. What's the question? Uh, let's see. The question was actually from one of our staff, Sage. Uh, what what musical instrument would Rayquaza play? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, he's he literally has check, see he can. literally has an ability called Delta Stream, so it has to be a woodwind. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Like, he he's the type of player that literally like blasts on a on a on a on a jam. Mm. At least, I, at least I think so. Like, just pure monstrous playing. I, I feel like... I don't know. I, I, part of me is like, oh, electric guitar, no question. Could but be. Then, but then part of me is also like, iwi, no question. Oh, iwi would But then be. another part of me is like, obviously tenor sax. That's what I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then another part of me is like, wait, but I could also see trumpet or like alto or like... I feel Something like really Ray, aggro. I feel like Rayquaza would be that that tenor player that exclusively plays in the upper range, just cause he can. <laughs> you know, I got I gotta come clean, man. I gotta I gotta be honest about something. I've recently started reevaluating my perception of Rayquaza. Really, not in a bad way, mm. but i wish i wish they could see this uh, but look let me just pull let me just pull up a picture what is happening here oh is it of your uh no i just like there there's a level of serenity to rayquaza that i that i never really associated with the character yeah there is like there is like something about rayquaza that you know 
when we think Rayquaza, we think just fully maxed out, like blasting. You know, maybe baritone sax even, but like, there's there's like a level of serenity to Rayquaza that I'm starting to pick up on more in my old age. I don't know. I I think it's because I I I see, like Rayquaza is my favorite dragon type because if it, it it embodies the meaning of dragon and just it is the most dragon dragon for yeah sure. like and when i think of dragon i think like pure ferocity and like just but just, like you know what i'm saying though like look at this like picture. it has grandeur but i think like i i get what you mean because 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 requ- like like they fly around the ozone layer they they're sole goal is to create peace between the land and the sea so i, I there's like there's some level of serenity to Requaza that i i haven't well something associated can, with so something can be grandiose and serene and ferocious like they're not yeah, mutually, oh yeah that's true that's true that's yeah true. they're not i think they're not mutually exclusive no i agree they're not mutually exclusive but i guess what the reason i'm bringing that up is i feel like the musical instrument question mm. ties into the serenity factor, right? Like, like what musical instrument requires a supreme amount of serenity, but is also very ferocious and fully maxed out I'd when still, it needs to be? I'd still say tenor. You think the tenor? <laughs> I still say tenor because, like, I'm, I don't disagree. I, I guess I'm just thinking. I'm just examining more possibilities. Maybe it's the type of serenity that is the thing, because, like. Tenor's serenity is sultry. It's very like... Ah, uh, that's true, yeah. It's like very warm. It's, it's almost like a maternal, paternal vibe. It's like sometimes. a it's like a fireplace where it's just, yeah. you, you hear the crackle. That that to me is what Tenor's serenity is. Just, is that in line with with, with the energy of Rikwaza? So though? that's the question of what type ah, of serenity it is. Because it could also be like... Charlie Parker and the Strings type, like, alto soprano serenity, where it's, like, that wistful. That is beautiful, too, yeah. Wistful with the wind, it could be that, too. But does, do, I feel like soprano would match the necessary ferocity. Where, it doesn't have the serenity, though, I don't think. Soprano has the same kind of, unless you think Kenny G. But uh, like, see, I think, I don't think, I don't, I think I personally can kind of rule out soprano. I could see an argument for alto and tenor. I think I'm more in line with tenor. Mm. I could also see baritone. I could see ba- baritone. But I, but I like bar- it would be a different. It wouldn't be like honky baritone. It would be like oh no, it would be like masterful. Do you know who Fred Ho is? Yes. It would be like Fred Ho baritone. I could see that. <laughs> Ray Quaza might be Fred Ho, like his spirit. <laughs> When did Fred Ho die? Oh my god! Is no. Ray Quaza Fred Ho reincarnate? Bro, if if they were if they died in like two thousands, I'm gonna. Oh, two thousand. Wait. Wait. No, two thousand fourteen. No, 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 that's too soon. No, no, that's too, that's too yeah. soon. Ray Quaza was already was already almost causing havoc. Was ten years old at that point. Okay. Oh yeah. Wait, was it ten? No, it was like thirteen years old by then. Oh wow. Time wow. is time is weird. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. So so. But I could see like Fred. Like, did you see that picture of him? One sec. We're looking at pictures I, of Fred. <laughs> like, this is pretty Rayquaza, dude. Yeah, that is pretty. Like, this is this is. I mean, come on. He's like, green. We find he's naked, green, and holding a baritone saxophone. If that's not Rayquaza. That... This I might just confirm it. Dude. I can't believe this that's might just confirm. Real... There's a, okay, if you literally search up Fred Ho on Google, <laughs> as in Fred space H O, you'll find a green a picture of him all in green, completely naked, completely naked. Well, no, not completely because he's got oh, he's got a shoe on. He's got Never a singular mind. shoe. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rayquaza. I could see it. I I think this might confirm it. Googling so, Fred Ho gave us the answer. So what is Rayquaza's instrument? Fred Ho. That that is his, yeah. that is their instrument. Yeah, I think so. Uh, man, I think that was the only. Wow, look at this. 
that I still that's such a powerful that's the one thing about podcasts is that if might we don't, be if that, we don't yeah. have a camera then it's like <laughs> <laughs> we could maybe just edit that into the YouTube yeah we could video. just put it in it's <laughs> or like, no or this could be the Patreon section yeah it's like, like you if you want to hear our thoughts on Rayquaza's instrument you have to subscribe yeah there you go you have to join the Patreon which by the way we should before we close out thank yes. the patrons. Thank you so much to which, the patrons. Which we, we actually got a, a good amount of new ones. We Thanks. really appreciate. Also, I want to just give a shout out to one of our newest patrons, Dave Pollock. Oh, the GOAT, um, Dave Pollock. Thanks so much, Dave. You're the best. Um, Dave actually asked me about the podcast in the last session. He was like, oh, when's the next episode? Because Dave has listened to our episodes. Which I was very shocked about. He literally like listened to, I think, the first episode and, and learned yes. of of my occupation i was like oh, you listen <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much side dishes dylan shadowen sean bowler nick spinoza jay daster woomy bartleson uh also i didn't know bartleson plays trombone that was that, dope that was a big surprise that yeah. was so cool sounds great on trombone and guitar yeah. i love those doubles those are like those those like doubles really are cool um, thank you, Wumi, for Thank the... you, Gian. Hopefully, I didn't destroy your name, but I probably did. James Murray, Mirabai Knight. Um, AF underscore AF W. AF underscore W. Absolutely killing me. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Dave Pollock. Thank you guys so much for the patrons. We really appreciate you and your support. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Also, um, towards the end of the year, we will be. Uh, releasing a like collection of some recordings both from the session house bands and maybe a couple bonus tracks mm -hmm. um, I uh, obviously still have to figure out the logistics but I think uh, I think it's highly likely that we can put together a robust demo of VGM covers um, that we will donate to the patrons because legally we cannot sell them oh yeah absolutely without not. a license. <laughs> Um, but you know, as a token of our appreciation, stay tuned for that. And, um, yeah, I think that about does it. I think we're good. We'll see you on July 7th. Ticket link will go up very soon. Very soon. <laughs> or it, by the time that this is out. By the time this is out, the ticket link will already be up. So go get your tickets right now. Yes. Now. Right now. Dude, right now. Do, 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 pause, what are you waiting pause for? It. Just pause yeah, it right just pa now. Pause the pa